requiring speed, strength, mobility, stamina, flexibility, and grace. The Rings, a strength event that requires the upper body of Schwarzenegger, the precision of a surgeon. The Vault, where explosiveness is the key. Carl Lewis meets Evil Knievel. Parallel Bars, a control and balance discipline. Mario Andretti and Mikhail Bereshnikov. And the High Bar, the daredevil of the flying Walendas, the timing of Chopin. Six individuals in each of six disciplines. Today the event competition is men's gymnastics once more plays the Myriad Arena. I'm Barry Tompkins along with Olympic gold medalist Bart Connor. And Bart, Bart, I think we absolutely have to talk about Lance Ringdahl before we look ahead to today. He was dominant in the all-around. Lance was brilliant. In fact, his win of 1.5 in the all-around is a huge win in any gymnastic competition. That's about like a 20-point win in a basketball game. That's big. Today, though, a very different kind of competition. This is the event competition. And here's a case where everybody can relax a little bit and just go for it. And once again, Lance Ringdahl is in all six event finals, so he has a shot at adding six more medals to the already two that he has. But tonight's event is really great because, as you mentioned, no scores carry over. Everybody's going to cut loose. There's no pressure from the all-around conference. He scored a 9.85 in the preliminary competition. Michael Racanelli scored a 9.9, and we'll be seeing him as well. So it's going to be a very tight competition here in floor. Let's talk about the requirements in floor exercise. Well, I think gymnastics is many times is a very difficult sport to understand, and uh, perhaps this will shed a little light on the specific requirements on this event. The gymnasts do normally four tumbling runs, but they have to show at least three different acrobatic connections with at least one C element. That's one of the more difficult elements. They have to do a strength part. We'll see that in the routine, and we'll also see one static element, a balance on one leg or one hand. And I'll point those out as we go. Yeah, I was going to say, we'll talk a little bit more. Here's the scoring breakdown. We'll talk more about C and B elements and what they are, but let's talk about this first part. And the scoring, the judges are looking for four points in difficulty that come from A, B, C, D moves. In combination, those are those specific requirements. Execution, that's form, that's worth 4.4. That comes down to 9.4. The bonus points are six tenths, and there's two tenths for risk, two tenths for originality, and two tenths for virtuosity, and I'll try to point those out as long as we go along. And the crowd responding warmly to the first competitor, Lance Ringald, and why not? He has really emerged as the coming star amongst the men, has he not? And Lance was certainly a surprise to make the 88 Olympic team in Seoul. I thought he would start to mature into great competitive form in a couple of years. But boy, he is at 19 years old. He is tremendously tough. He can do every big trick. Look at this combination here. From the circles, he does three Swiss hops. Shows great flexibility. Now here's a press to a handstand. That fulfills the strength requirement that I mentioned earlier. In addition, the floor exercise mat is 12 meters by 12 meters. The gymnast needs to cover the full floor area. Here's his second of three connecting tumbling runs. Front step out through to a double full punch front, one and a quarter. Lance Ringdahl from Albuquerque, New Mexico, training with Ed Birch there in Gold Cup Gymnastics. That's a coming club in the sport of men's gymnastics. There's no question Ed Birch has developed some really fine athletes. And you can see here Lance is doing that balance on one foot that your judges also need to see. So he's fulfilled all the requirements. Here's his last run. Tuck double back. Nicely done. Lance Ringdahl sets the tone for what is to come here in floor exercise. And this crowd can't say enough about this crowd. It's your home here, really. And it, they have just been tremendous. They appreciate everything that's seen. Just a good crowd. Take another look at the first pass. This opening tumbling run is outstanding. Laid out one and three quarter flips with one and a half twists through to a straddle jump, punch front. Great combination elements of back tumbling through to front tumbling. In his second pass, he also used a similar combination. Here's a front step out. He continues through to a double twist. And notice when he lands a double twist, right as he lands, Boom, right there, he punches to a front one and a quarter. Let me tell you, that's tough on the old Achilles tendon. His last tumbling run was a very high tuck double back. But you'll notice Lance doesn't get his arms up quick enough. His arms are very low there on the takeoff. He's a little short, has to pull it around, and ends up taking a hop. All right, now uh, there will be a judges conference, as always, after the first performer. He seemed to do a pretty good job here. Now, is that going to set the standard very high for everyone else? It's always very difficult to be the first one to go up because the judges tend to be a little conservative with the first performance in any event. And there is the score for Lance Ringall, 9-7-5. So there is something to shoot for now for the rest of these competitors. 
who are, incidentally, Patrick Kirksey, David St. Pierre, Cheney Humphrey, Mike Racanelli, and John Roethlisberger. Six competitors in each of six events. Patrick Kirksey up next. 1989, as you see, he was the national champ, or rather finished second in floor exercise this event in the national championships. And again, you can't say enough about the fans here in Oklahoma City. They have been very appreciative and makes me feel really proud. I came here about 12 years ago and my coach Paul Zerton and I helped develop gymnastics in this area and I'm really glad to see that the Oklahomans are turning out to, to cheer on not only many of the gymnasts here but certainly in the women's competition as well. There were some stars from Oklahoma. Patrick Kirksey opens with a full twisting double and did he nail that or what? I love the position in the air on that full twisting double. Now he is five foot ten. Does that help him or hurt him? Did he go out of well, bounds? Well, it looked like it hurt him there. It seemed to me as his hand was on the line. That'll be a tenth of a point deduction. So in that case, his five feet, all five feet, ten of them got him in a little bit of trouble. That's right. If it was your height, he'd have been all right. <laughs> he'd been in the middle of the mat. <laughs> Good flexibility as he does a press to a handstand from a split. Once again, showing terrific control. That's the strength requirement. So far, he's done two of the tumbling passes. He's fulfilled the strength requirement. He's done three of the tumbling passes, excuse me. There's the last requirement. He has to fulfill the balance on one leg. Takes his breath there as the judges ring the bell. That signifies he has 20 seconds to continue his routine. Nice high tuck double back. Patrick Kirksey of Atlanta, Georgia. And he will be shooting for a 9.75. That the score put up by Lance Wingnall, who is the first competitor here in floor exercise. Let's take another look at his first pass here. This is a great looking full twisting double back. It's very clean and precise in all of the mechanics. Good lift open tuck position he doesn't have to grab his legs to pull around the rest of the flip that was nicely done and his last pass let's go Stacey. this is the tuck double back i believe he gets his arms up a little bit better than lance did yes good reach he's very high a little sloppy in the form higher than i think he planned on he had to take a little bit of a step there and again we can't emphasize enough that these athletes have been working very, very hard since the national championships and of course pointing toward the world championships in October. And even though we mentioned the fact that they will be more relaxed tonight, there still is the simple fact that they have been working extremely hard. 9-6-5, the score for Patrick Kirksey. So he doesn't quite get enough to move into the lead ahead of Lance Ringnall. The Lockins with Bart Conner, Kathy Johnson alongside. She will be talking to some of the competitors as this event final moves along. We're at the Marriott Arena here in Oklahoma City. And as we mentioned, an outstanding crowd, as there have been throughout the festival here. There's a good look at them. They are not only most appreciative, they are a very knowledgeable crowd, and I think the man on my right had a lot to do with that. You've really educated the folks here in Oklahoma City. Well, I'm certainly happy to uh, to have been a part of that, as has Kelly Garrison Steves, I think, helped in promoting gymnastics in the state of Oklahoma, and uh, it's really nice to see the Oklahomans turning out in fine style. It has really caught on without question. This is the floor exercise. This is the first of six disciplines that we're going to be seeing today, and the man you're looking at right now really made quite an impression in the all-around competition, just looks like an athlete, just merely from appearance. Cheney Humphrey, Kathy Johnson pointed out the other night that he has the body of a linebacker, smaller version certainly of a linebacker, but he definitely does. Cheney's actually 5'6 and 140 pounds, but you'd never know it. He looks like he's about 185. He's only 18 years old. He had a pretty good all-around competition himself. Yes, and he was seventh in the U.S. Championships, and of course he was second here. He was 1.5 behind Lance Ringnold, but it was an impressive meet for Cheney. Cheney scored a 9.8 in earlier round of this event in the all-around and team competition, so we know he has it, has it in him. He should open with a laid-out double back wow that was nice in fact almost a little too nice over rotated it just a little bit did he save it yeah he saved it beautifully i'm sure it'll probably be a tenth of a point because he was a little out of control but he'll get his bonus points back as i mentioned earlier virtuosity for showing tremendous amplitude in his tumbling here's the 
second run. Full twisting double. Over rotated again. Boy, is he powerful. Does a competitor have to adjust to the mat, or is the mat the same pretty much anywhere you go? Actually, the mats uh, are quite different, uh, especially when you travel internationally. Uh, we used to go to the People's Republic of China, and their mat was green carpeting. And to me, it looked and felt like a pool tabletop. <laughs> this thing was hard. The mats in the U.S., we have the best equipment in the world here, AAI, in the U.S. And Cheney just drops out of that tuck double back on that very springy floor. Fine performance for the 18-year-old out of Albuquerque, coached by Art Sherlock at UCLA. Another look at his first pass. This layout double back was sky high, and it's difficult to get not only terrific height, but also an amazing amount of rotation. Notice the lift. Look at the body position. He is up there, and he pulls it around, landing almost straight up and down. And his second pass. This is the full twisting double back. It's a full in, a full in the first flip, and then a tuck back in the second. Maybe just a little sloppy. One little step. But his routine was very difficult. This was a terrific dismount. He stuck the landing. Good height. Nice job. Cheney Humphrey, 9.50 the score. It's a rough for Cheney. And that will move him. I think it could have been a higher score. Yeah, it does seem like a little bit low. A little bit low. Lance Ringnall continues to be the leader, and Patrick Kirksey was the second performer. The second, and Cheney Humphrey. Back in third place. Mike Racanelli now won the national championships in this discipline. And he scored a 9-9 yesterday here. Wow. There's a layout double through to a flip-flop. Straddle jump. Punch front one of the quarter. That is a world-class mount. Second run. Full in. Perfect landing. This guy is on. There's the flares. Notice he cranks it up to a pirouetting handstand and down to a straddle splits. I like this combination here. He fulfills not only the strength requirement, but also the originality requirement. And he gets the two-tenths bonus back for doing a wide straddle press handstand through a splits. Good-looking originality. Handspring front with a full in the laid-out position. Over the front to a knee. Once again, here comes that one-foot balance. Good strength and flexibility. Here's his last tumbling run. A full in. Oh, and he's short. Had it right up to the end. We'll lose some points at the end. Mike Racanelli. You know, this is what I was telling you, Barry. In the event finals, the guys pull out all the stops. In the prelims, he dismounted with only a tuck double back. He went for the full in at the end of this routine. But what a mount. This is the laid out double. Nice position. What's most impressive is he continues tumbling right out of that through to a back handspring straddle jump. Punch front one and a quarter. Boy, that's nice. So he had it perfect to the end. Here's the second pass. This is the full in. Full twisting double back. Notice he twists off the floor. There's the full, then the tuck back. Two flips, one twist. Perfect landing. This routine, he gets a lot of bonus points back for tumbling out of his opening tumbling run. A lot of difficulty. He does a full in at the end here. He's just too short. It's unfortunate because that's the kind of routine that could win a medal at the World Championships if he could hit it in Stuttgart coming up in October. Well, I think he'd probably like to have that last run back without question. 9-5 the score for Mike Racanelli. A protege, of course, of Peter Corman, bronze medalist in the Olympic Games and the first bronze medalist for America in how many years? 44 years. So we move on now to John Roethlisberger. He's the last competitor in this first discipline. Boy, there's a really high full twisting double. Almost went out of bounds, but he saved that on that transition. Front step out. He's very quick. Good clean style there. Front step out through the double full punch front. 
There's some flexibility for you. Uh, yeah. They call that a pancake. I guess that's pretty descriptive. A little trouble there in the press. Notice he's checking that handstand. He'll lose at least a tenth of a point for that. Head spring front. Once again, he has fulfilled all the requirements as he completes them here with this one foot balance. He'll need to finish with his last tumbling run across the diagonal to complete the coverage of the floor area. There's the dismount, a full in. Nice job. That's the same trick that Racanelli just missed at the end. Impressive finish for John Rossesberger. John Roethlisberger, of course, as we look at his first pass from a gymnastics family. John's father, of course, the coach at the University of Minnesota. John opened with a terrific full in. Look at the rotation. He made it easily. You notice as he turns, he's looking at that white line. Good judgment call there. John is only 19, and this is one of the impressive stories about what's happening with the U.S. program. No, there he is. He is receiving the gold medal for the floor exercise. So... Let's check in the sponsor of the U.S. Olympic Festival. When it comes to real estate, put your trust in number one. Kim Zemeskel, 13 of Houston. Just one of six of Bella Caroli's protégés here. The leader in the women's gymnastics competition after the compulsories. She ran away from the field with a very consistent performance and an outstanding routine on the balance beam. The goal, just one of two for her, as her East gym mates won the team competition too. For Kim Zemeskel, back-to-back -back golden moment. Well, from a golden moment for one of Bella's girls, we go back to Bart and Barry and the rings. Gentlemen. Thank you very much, Jim. And on in the ring competition, and we have spread the wealth around here, we should mention, when last we met, it was Lance Ringnald on the floor exercise winning. Chris Waller went on to win the pommel horse, and now we are on the still rings where Tim Ryan is the leader, having scored a 9.75. But here is the anchor man, if you will, Lance Ringnald. Once again, Lance is having a terrific competition. Now, he scored a 9.6 in the all-around and team competition of this event earlier. So we know he has potential to score really high. And they play, whenever there's a delay here, they play the music from Jeopardy when they get to the final Jeopardy question. <laughs> the audience certainly is loving it. Let's talk about the requirements in this particular discipline, Bart. Yeah, this certainly is a good opportunity to spend a little time talking about the nuances of the sport of gymnastics. This looks a little complicated, and I'll try and talk us through this. First of all, the gymnast must perform two different handstands of at least B value. The moves are A, B, C, and D, A being the easiest, B in the mid-range. One has to be done with a swing, one with strength. They have to do a static strength move, at least B value, and one more strength part. What all of this means, basically, is the judges are increasing the emphasis on strength moves. All right. It's the only sport I've ever been around where the rules are made by NASA. <laughs> so Lance Ringnall now prepares for his competition, and the crowd applauding the performance a moment ago of Tom Schlesinger, who finished with a 9.65. It moves him into second place behind Tim Ryan. But here's the man of the moment, 19-year-old Lance Ringnall who has had a superb meet here. That's Mike Thomas boosting Lance Ringel up to the rings. It's a great opening sequence right there. Back roll around to a cross. That's one of the strength moves the judges are looking for. They locate front giant. There's a move called a Yamawaki to a whippet. How about that? For I like that terminology. Another strength move, but you see Lance is swinging a little bit. And he killed the swing perfectly on that move there. It was first done by Kreisen from the Soviet Union, as well as Delchev from Bulgaria. There's a press to a handstand, one of the requirements the judges need to see as well. He has also swung to a handstand earlier in the routine. Here's the dismount, a clean laid out double. Nailed it.
Now, he did nail it, but the question is, did he nail it by enough? Well, it's going to be hard to tell, but certainly this was a bright spot in his exercise. He gets originality points for doing a move like this. Very few gymnasts attempt something like this. And this is an outstanding angle to take a look at how the gymnast sees a laid-out double flip. He does a giant over the top. He's going to keep his body stretched. You'll see right here he's looking for the floor. Where is it? There it is. Bingo. I'll tell you, it takes more nerve than I've got. <laughs> We mentioned at the very beginning of this that these all look so easy. And I'll tell you, the work and the dedication that goes into making it look so easy is beyond my comprehension. Well, and it's great they're having such a good time. That's John Roethlisberger along with Lance. And as I mentioned earlier in the show, it's so exciting to see the new junior gymnasts taking over the reins of U.S. gymnastics. And these kids are outstanding. There's the score for Lance Ringnall. Very good, 9-6, but simply not good enough to catch the leader, Tim Ryan. Now, we're going to have an opportunity right now to look back on Tim Ryan's performance on the rings, and it was virtually flawless, Bart. And this is certainly one of Tim's best events. He is so strong. He pulls through, does a kip to an L. It's a straight arm, straddle, press to a handstand. That's called an inverted iron cross. Watch this. This is called a Maltese cross. That's a combination of a cross and a plunge move. One of the most difficult strength moves you can do. It's a good combination. A whip at two and L cross. Once again, as I mentioned, the judges are looking for more and more strength elements. And there's no question that Tim Ryan has all of the strength as well as world-class swing elements, which of course is a requirement. Here's a beautiful locked arm, front giant swing. The rings are absolutely still and he totally rocks that layout double. That's about as good as you can see. Tim Ryan finished with a 9.75. It was enough for him to win this particular discipline. So, so far we've had three events and three different winners. Great. Here's another look. Once again, this is a terrific angle to see what's happening as he bails out of the handstand. There's a laid out double flip, nice, clean, tight arch. He spots the landing and doesn't budge at all. This is a good opportunity to see the incredible strength. That's the inverted iron cross. And now notice this, he's gonna power down to a plunge and then lower down all the way through the rings. That's called a Maltese cross. That's tough. And there's a look at the winner, Tim Ryan, 9.75. He scored an ad, it was enough to give him the gold medal in the still rings. And here's the way they finished in this particular discipline. Tim Ryan wins it, Mike Racanelli finished second, 9.7. Tom Schlesinger, perhaps a surprise, 9-6-5 in third place ahead of Cheney Humphrey, Lance Ringnall, and David St. Pierre. And the bottom line of this whole thing is that the future of men's gymnastics seems to be in very good hands. If there is a leader to be picked, I suppose it's Lance Ringnall. Men's gymnastics in the United States has come a long way. The team has gotten more experience, more exposure, and it's gotten younger. It all seemed to start with the heroes of 1984. Mark Connor has moved on to success behind the microphone. And his teammates, Vidmar and Gaylord, have also sought media careers. Thomas, Daggett, and Hartung have all remained involved in the sport. And it didn't really end there. The Johnsons, Lakes, and Davises provided the backbone of today's new breed. That new breed includes the likes of Patrick Kirksey and Tim Ryan, names you'll soon know and the captain, Lance Ringnall. One of the biggest things that gymnastics scene right now is that the new group of young, the young generation coming up. I think it's gonna get younger and younger as the years go on. But right now our junior team is very strong. And I think that was initiated by Tim Ryan and myself. You know, because of our ambitions are so high, the seniors at the top, and they're pretty comfortable. The juniors are always fighting to get to the top. So we've got people to look, that's why they move a little quicker, I think. Being so young, it was a remarkable feat that in 1988, at age 18, Lance was named to the Olympic squad, the youngest member of the team in 20 years. The biggest thing was, you know, I'm the youngest one, so the pressure wasn't really on me. Lance Ringnold had a chance to tie that record, but missed out on the horse. Here's Barry and Bart again. And Bart, Jim, breathing a big sigh of relief over that. He is still immortal here. <laughs> Meantime, we are in the vault competition now, and once again, can't emphasize enough that Really, and we've been saying this, I feel like we've been saying this ad nauseum, but we're really watching the future of gymnastics, both women's and men's here. 
And I think the competition today indicative just of that exact thing. Lance Ringnall won the floor exercise. Chris Waller won the pommel horse. Tim Ryan won the still rings. And now we're looking at Conrad Versanger. And this is his first appearance of the day. Conrad, of course, trains at Stanford University with Sadao Hamada. And Tong Fei, the world champion from the Chinese team, is now coaching in this country. Boy, that was a great vault. That's a Kasamatsu with a half turn. It was very high and nice form. This is a great opportunity to see what happens on this vault. He round offs on, cranks it around one short hop. You'll see he's a little out of line. This is a good opportunity to see that. He actually ends up hopping a little out of line. That will be a minor deduction, but this vault, of course, is judged out of a 9-6. He can get two, ton two tenths of a point for originality and as much as two tenths of a point for virtuosity. He'll get the virtuosity points because he was certainly very high. He'll lose a couple of tenths for not sticking the landing. Again, emphasizing the point that you made earlier that everybody is very loose and really going for it. 9-4, the score for Conrad Borsanger. Six, the best so far in this competition that put up by Patrick Kirksey. David has a very exciting vault. He does a Kasamatsu with a full turn. It's one of the most exciting vaults we're going to have an opportunity to see here. It's one of the most difficult vaults being done in the world. Now, he nailed it the other day in the preliminaries, and I haven't seen him do it that well before. Let's see if he can repeat. And he's in the midst of a very good competition. He's, he's having a third great in a couple day. of events. Here we go. There it is. And again, this young man is having the meat of his life. What a confidence builder. As they say in Westwood, California, where this young man lives, this vault is way hard. Way hard. He is up there. He cranks it around. That is really world-class stuff. You'll notice he's going to cartwheel on, get a good push, crank that twist. A lot to do, and it's amazing he kept such good form in the air. So now it's David St. Pierre who awaits his score. He has a 9-6 to beat. I'm so high every day. Hi. <laughs> and he scores a 9-6. And that moves him into a tie with Patrick Kirksey. Can there be a tie in this event? Come, uh, yes, there can. And uh, Patrick actually did a vault that was a little higher and a little farther, but certainly not as complicated. Come up, one had, competitor left in the vault. Had David stuck that vault, there's no question that would be the number one vault of the day. This vault here is also very exciting. Mike Racanelli. Handspring front with a full. <laughs> that just might be our winner. That is a nice ball. May not have to worry about ties, folks. He loves it. This ball is very difficult to land because we'll notice he's flipping forward. You don't see the ground until the last minute. This is a great angle to see how this ball works. He's going to do a handspring onto the horse, tuck a front, and then crank a full twist. Watch, he's looking for the floor. He doesn't even see it until after his feet are on the ground. That is a blind landing. Here's another point to make, too. You notice the horse in men's competition in a different position than it is in women's competition. Right, the men vault long ways and the women vault sideways. And an excellent vault by Mike Racanelli. Now the only question, will it be enough to move ahead of Patrick Kirksey and David St. Pierre? Sure, Jim St. Pierre. 9-7. In the vault, Mike Racanelli has won the vault, and once again, it continues the string of new winners in each event. Racanelli wins this event, Tim Ryan won the steel rings, Chris Waller won the pommel horse, and Lance Ringnall won the floor exercise. And you wonder what kind of shape the American men's team is in, and it's starting to look part more and more as though it's in pretty darn good shape. It certainly does, and vaulting has been a weak event for the American team for a long time. Patrick Kirksey, as you'll see with his vault here, does a full twisting Kasamatsu. Excuse me, a Kasamatsu in the laid out position. 
Nice form in the air, and boy, good job in controlling that landing. Once again, as you mentioned, the American team is looking much stronger, and a lot of improvement on ball. Let's talk about some of the changes that have taken place in the American team. Of course, they hit the glory point in your year, in 1984. From that point on, well, things didn't really go too well, but now they've really taken steps. Well, the U.S. team certainly did have a lot of trouble in the World Championships in 85 and 87. The 88 games, they placed 11th. There's a whole new coaching staff now, led by Bill Mead, Moss Watanabe, Jim Hartung, my Olympic teammate, and Ed Birch, the coach of Lance Ringold and formerly of Cheney Humphrey. There's a lot more training camps. There's incentive money for the athletes. Uh, the athletes who make the national team and are eligible for this money can earn some money to help defray some of their training costs. So they're making some significant changes, and I think it's going to show up in the next few years with the men's program. Here are the numbers in the vault competition. Mike Racanelli, 970, wins it over Patrick Kirksey and David St. Pierre. We mentioned St. Pierre is in the midst of an outstanding competition for him. Lance Ringall, he won the floor exercise, has to settle for fourth place here. He was trying to best Bart Connor's record of more than eight medals in a competition in a festival competition. Competition. Conrad Worsanger and Gerard Hanks wind up winds up in number six place. The interesting thing too here, Bart, and this is very similar to what the women have going, is that these five or six or seven top men gymnasts will be competing against each other. And as a result of that, I have to think that competition is going to make them better in international competition. Well, that's been a big problem with the U.S. team. There's been no consistency and no transition period from the great teams to the developmental teams. The U.S. team that won the gold in 84 began working out together in 1981. Well, this is what's happening now. This team is together. Cheney Humphrey. We have already had five competitors precede Cheney Humphrey onto the parallel bars, and the leader right now is Lance Ringnall, 9.8. But we have had very high scores in this particular event. Yes, and we've seen some outstanding routines packed with difficulty, fulfilling all the requirements on the parallel bars. It's going to come down to sticking landings. Cheney opens with a peach handstand. Powerful mount. That's called a giant swing. There's a giant with a half. A little sloppy there. Now Cheney seems like he's in a little bit of a hurry. His routine is very difficult. But it's not quite as smooth as the routine we saw earlier from guys like... Kevin Davis and Lance Ringnall. There's a Stutz. He's a little over. Has to fight that handstand. There's a tuck double back. Well, Cheney Humphrey with a good performance on the parallel bars, but a very big question mark as to whether it will be good enough. I think the uh, judges will one-tenth him to death because although the routine was very good, there are one-tenth of a point deductions here and there that are going to add up. There's a tuck double back. Nicely done. But he never got into the smooth rhythm that I've seen him get into before on the parallel bar. You'll have a chance in a moment to see exactly what Bart Connor was just talking about because we will have, from a moment ago, Lance Ringnall on the parallel bars. And he is the apparent winner. We say apparent because we still will wait for Cheney Humphrey's score. And Ringwald, Ringwald had to come from behind a little bit himself because Kevin Davis had put a pretty good score up there ahead of him, a 9.75. Tom Schlesinger had a 9-7 before him, and 9-6 is the score, as you see, for Cheney Humphrey. So under normal circumstances, a pretty good score, but in this case, not nearly enough to hold up to this man. There's no question also that this is one of Lance Ringnall's most improved events. I like his mount. He jumps right into a plan. That's called a Pete straddle cut on the end. Now watch this. He's way out on the end of the bars. He's going to do a giant swing way out there. And then a giant front up rise to a front one and a quarter. Good combination. There's a very high reverse stutz. Now, in comparison with Cheney's routine, notice he's a little smoother, takes his time on that Diamondoff. A little smoother swing. Doesn't seem to be in a hurry. Nice handstand, stutz, stutz. Here comes his dismount. Pike double back. And I think what you saw is a classic example right here and a graphic example of why that was a 9-8 score and Cheney Humphrey, you saw a moment ago, scored a 9-6. Once again, let's take a look at this mount. This is pretty tough stuff. He jumps right into a plan. It takes a tremendous amount of strength. Then he's going to lower to this peach straddle cut. He's way out on the end. 
Swing the handstand. Here comes the giant. Notice he's out on the end of those bars. This is the dismount from the handstand. He does a pike double back. Good, clean form. One short hop on the landing, but that's the only deduction in that routine. And that was enough for him to win it. 9-8, his score on parallel bars. That's his second gold medal in this event final. He won the men's floor exercise, remember, just a moment ago. Here's the way it stands, then, in the parallel bars. Ringdahl wins it. Kevin Davis with a fine performance himself is second. Tom Schlesinger is third. Vursanger, Racanelli, and Humphrey finish tied for fourth. Back with more right after this. Disciplines in the event final we're watching today here at the Marriott Arena are now history. Coming up, the high bar, and that always one of the most crowd-pleasing events in gymnastics. Earlier, Mike Racanelli won the men's vault, and right now, he's with Kathy Johnson. It's pretty exciting, Mike, to come out on top with the tough field of vaulters that we had today. Uh, yeah, it was. You know, everybody vaulting here uh, does a D vault, uh, which is um, the hardest one you can do, and um, they're all accomplished vaulters. They've all done great things on vault in the past, and I'm really happy to do my best vault this meet. I was really psyched about it. Well, are you where you want to be in preparation for the World Championships coming up in October? Um, not quite yet, but I don't think I want to be ready just yet because uh, it's a long way off yet, and I don't want to peak too early. You know, I, I try not to uh, think of myself as peaking and, and, you know, highs and lows, but... Uh, it's a long way off yet, so I'm going to pace myself. Well, congratulations on Vault and continued good luck. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you, Kathy. And congratulations okay. to Mike Racanelli. Incidentally, we mentioned the fact that Lance Ringo was expected to win a whole bunch of medals. He has done just that. He's won three golds and one silver. But look at David St. Pierre. One gold, one silver, three bronze. Not bad. We'll be back. Brought to you by your nearby Century 21 Real Estate Professional, a proud sponsor of the U.S. Olympic Festival. When it comes to real estate, put your trust in number one. At 18, Lance Ringnold of Albuquerque, New Mexico, was the youngest U.S. Olympic gymnast in Seoul. He took second at the 1989 U.S. National Championships. And Thursday night, Lance dominated the all-round in men's gymnastics. He scored a near-perfect 9.85 on the floor exercise, the parallel bars, and the horizontal bar. For Lance Ringnold, another golden moment. He has had a bunch of those. He has currently won four medals, which might mean you would like to find out about uh, the people that have won the most Olympic Festival medals up to this point, at least going into today's competition. For the men, there's a swimmer, Jeffrey Cronin, who's captured six. Those tied with five include two other swimmers, Jerry Rossetti and Brian Ritter, as well as the bowler, William Poff. Mike Harbald, a kayaker. And then for the women, Sarah Peroni, a swimmer, has six. Four swimmers, or four ladies, rather, tied with five. Paige uh, Wilson, who's another swimmer, two speed roller skaters, Mary Nestor and Pab Webb, and a bowler, Marine Webb. Let's go back now and see if Lance Ringnold will collect another medal. Here's Barton Berry again. Okay, thank you, Jim. And this one really highly competitive. We sat down, actually, before we began today's competition, and we said, well, who do we look for in the high bar? And Bart Connor and Kathy Johnson agreed you can look for any one of the six competitors. High bar is always that way. It's one of those hit or miss events. It's very exciting because it comes down to who sticks the landings and who catches those high flying release moves. Kevin Davis first up. Listen to the crowd. Can't say enough about the good folks here in Oklahoma City. That's great. Well, they're in for quite a show here on the high bar, and certainly Kevin Davis scored a 9.75 in the preliminaries here. He's one who can win this thing. In fact, Kevin has a new sequence he's just put in his routine. It's a combination of release elements. We'll see it early. There's a stalder. Okay, now here it comes. One arm giant over the top. To a reverse hex. He's out there. Beautiful. Well, he is right on. That is good stuff. Look at that jam right to the handstand. That's the inverted giant swings. That's also a requirement. Hop pirouette. This exercise is hot. Can he stick to dismount? So Here we go. What a treat. This crowd is really enjoying this routine. 
Watch this combination. One arm over the top. He is right where he wants to be as he does the reverse act to a Ginger. That's new for him, and he performed it like he's done it thousands of times. Here's the dismount. This is the only place where he gave up any points at all. It's a laid out, full out. He's very high, has plenty of rotation, just a little too much rotation. And of course, one tenth of a point for the step there. I'll tell you what, you missed that release and you wind up in Dallas. <laughs> That's the way high bar is now. And there's no way you can compete with the best Soviets or Chinese or East Germans going to the world championships with weak routines. You have to do maximum difficulty in every case. Let's talk about the requirements in this particular event. Bart. Well, once again, and this looks rather complicated. One element of at least B value in L grip or dorsal hang. What does that mean? Exactly. Well, I'll try to point that out as that goes along. And of course, one definite flight element, and that's the release move we're seeing from all of these great gymnasts. 9-7, the score for Kevin Davis. Crowd really loves it. Today, incidentally, is Kevin Davis's birthday. Not a bad little present for him. Cheney Humphrey is next. We saw Cheney at the recent U.S. Championships use three release moves in a row. We just saw Kevin complete successfully two in a row. Let's see if Cheney can pull off the release sequence of three moves in a row. It's going to be a Tkachev to a Tkachev to a Ginger. Okay, here we go. The first Tkachev should be legs together. There it is. Second one legs apart. And the Ginger. Little form break there as he stooped in, but there's that L grip position we were talking about. That's the Eagle Giant swing. Here's the dismount. He slings it out. One step. step. Charlie Humphrey wows him in Oklahoma City. Boy, what a treat and what a nice young man. It's so exciting to see the American team really pushing maximum level of difficulty. There's the reverse heck, legs together. The second one comes, legs apart. And here's the third. This is a Ginger, a backflip with a half twist. He's right on. Boy, that's tough. Shannon Humphrey, 16 years old. I beg your pardon. 18 years old. His brother is also a com competitor is 16. Watch this dismount. He slings it a little bit. It almost like he peeled off. He traveled too far away from the bar. And, of course, took one step on the landing, but, boy, that's a tough routine. So, Cheney Humphrey awaits his score. 9-7 to beat. That put up by Kevin Davis. I don't think he'll get it because he had a form break as he jammed in for the Eagle Giants wings and, of course, a big step on the landing. But still, it was a treat to see those three release moves back to back to back. Close, but no cigar. 9-6-5 on the bar for Cheney Humphrey. And don't you know there's more to come? crowd-pleasing discipline this is. They love these crazy guys flying around on that thing. And you have to be. I'm absolutely convinced of that. I don't know. You seem so normal to me. How'd you do that stuff? <laughs> Sometimes I watch these routines and wonder why. <laughs> Here's Lance Ringald. He's been the story of this competition. There's no question that Lance could lock this event up. He has everything in his high bar routine. He's got the releases. He's got a big time dismount. And he knows how to stick the landings and it's going to come down to that. Here's the release. Reverse heck to a Ginger. Nice. For being such a young man, he's such a mature competitor. He really doesn't get rattled. He takes his time. Doesn't rush. Good smooth sequence here. A hot full pirouette. Once again, it's going to come down to stick in the landing. This is a double full out in the late out position. Be good. Yes. What a pleasure to see that routine. Here's the combination of the leg together to Katya, right to the Ginger. Once again, very high, perfect form. One of the best elements of Lance Rignall's style is his ability to do the most complicated elements very easily. This is a double twisting, double layout. Nails it. I can't tell you how hard that is, Barry. I don't think it have to. I think anybody who watches it can appreciate how difficult it is. 
And we await his score. There it is, 9-8-5. That'll move him into first place. Stuff. Tim Ryan now. And you see his medal count. He's got three, one of each. And Tim, of course, just recently beat Lance on high bar at the Nationals two weeks ago. Let's see if he can do it again. He has been bothered with some sore wrists. Here's his release sequence. It's a one-arm Tkachev to a Ginger. A little low on the Ginger, but he did a good job at keeping that whole series going. Here's his L grip position, as we noted. That's one of the specific requirements. The dismount should be a laid out, full out. There it is. Oh, and one oh, short hop. hop. That'll be the difference. This is a great combination. You'll see he gets into a little trouble. He goes over the top. This is a one arm reverse heck. And he's pretty low on that Ginger and in a little close, but he does a great job at keeping that combination moving. Now this dismount is beautiful. The position in the air, notice he's got a nice tight arch in the second half of the flip. That's great. But he needs to stick the landing if he hopes to beat a guy like Lance Ringnall, because Lance sticks him every time. I don't want to say that's a tough release, but he went into this routine with a 32 sleeve length and came out with a 36. <laughs> on a one arm only. That's right, that's right. Hard to get shirts off the rack that way. <laughs> so he awaits his score now, Tim Ryan. And the score for him, 9-7. Won't be enough, but still an excellent meet in general for Tim Ryan. In fact, that might be said about any one of five or six competitors here. And I'll tell you, I've had a chance to do boxing here at this festival. I've been to a couple of basketball games. I can't speak for what it's like out of track and field. I don't know what it was like at swimming or diving. But I'll tell you, I haven't heard a crowd be into a particular event any more than they're into this one right here. And it's so exciting to see them cheering the athletes on. And, of course, High Bar is the place to do it because these routines are so outrageous. Patrick Kirksey opens with a wrong way stalder to a pirouette. That's a D move, one of the high-level difficulty elements the judges are looking for. Here's his release sequence. There's two Tkachevs with a giant in between. Different from some of the other gymnasts who did the release moves immediately. Patrick opted to do a giant in between. He's improving a lot on high bar because he is upgrading his difficulty, but wait till you see this dismount. This is one of the best triples being done in the world. So far, flawless. Here it comes. There it is. One, two, three. Oh! Oh, that'll cost him. with his legs together. He does the giant swing there. You'll notice he goes over the top and sets up for the next Tkachev. This one legs apart. Of course, this move was invented by the Soviet gymnast, Alexander Tkachev, about 10 years ago. This dismount is big time. This is world-class stuff. He's high. He's got tremendous amount of flip. I called it one, two, three, but it was about one, two, three and a quarter. And that was the problem. It was the quarter that cost him. This is up there. Look at him crank that thing around. That's called cowboy when you pull your legs apart because at that moment you're kind of going, yeah, <laughs> You're going, make a wish. And the score for Patrick Kirksey, 9.3, and it was definitely the dismount that cost him. But once again, you can see it on his face. This is the finals. They're going for everything here, and that really makes it a pleasure. And you might have just heard him say there, right behind you, Bart, saying it was one of the best routines I've ever done. He just missed the dismount. And that was barely. Final competitor, Chris Waller. Chris scored at 9-8 in the preliminaries. He has great high bar routine. There's a full over, one arm giant, full twist pirouette. Reverse heck, great form, right to a ginger. That's the highest one of the day. 
He's very aggressive. Notice how quick he is. Good, clean form. Toe point is excellent. Those are those Eagle Giant swings. Gonna come down to the dismount this again. Double twisting double. He's gotta stick it. He did it! But a step. A step. Good, but is it good enough? Boy, this whole high bar final has been one great routine after the next. This release sequence is terrific. There's a reverse act. Look at how high he is on the skinger. It's a backflip with a half twist. He is up there. He continued through his exercise. Good form here. This is a double twisting, double back. And once again, Lance Ringnold is the master at sticking. And if you hope to even challenge Lance, you can't let those feet move. Once again. Two flips and two twists in the tuck position is very complicated. Just that little hop. I thought he had it when he landed. And it'll probably cost him the gold medal. That shows you what I know. I lied. 9-8. And that's good enough for second. I didn't lie. I thought maybe he had enough. But he did not. And your winner is Lance Ringnall. And he has chalked up four gold medals here. Quite an afternoon for Lance Ringnall. Now let's go back to Jim Kelly. Jim? And what a polite young man. You met him live last week. That said the tradition continues. Well, here's a tradition that continued and befell Kevin Davis. Today was his birthday. At the University of Nebraska, this is what you get when you have a birthday. And he played it out perfectly, did he not? I'd give Patrick Kirksey, who placed that pie in his face, about a 9-9 for that one. The 1989 U.S. Olympic Festival brought to you by HBO, the biggest, the best. Nobody brings it home like HBO. By Reebok. And by Armor All Protective, because we're crazy about cars, too. Two live telecasts tomorrow to close it all out. Coming up at 2 o'clock Eastern Time for three hours, more track and field. Here from Norman. The gymnastics, the women's individual. More with Bella's girls. He has six 13-year-olds here. Diving, the women's 10-meter finals. Then at 8 o'clock, track and field. Volleyball, the men's gold medal match. And diving, the... This U.S. Olympic Festival kicked off before 76,000 standing room only fans eight days ago. It has played to record crowds that the Twin Cities of Minneapolis-St. Paul will set their sights on next year as the host of this U.S. Olympic Festival. More medals, of course, to be awarded during tomorrow's final day of competition. But right now, a special musical look back at some of America's best as they set their sights on Barcelona and Albertville. For all of us, good night, everybody.